This is how the spring game is going to break down because everybody does it differently. First half, two 12-minute quarters with traditional clock. We're talking stoppages on first down, stoppages on incomplete passes, just like any normal regular season game. Second half changes a little bit where we get running clock, and there is the head man in year two, Brent Pry, after spending seven, eight years at Penn State as an associate head coach. He comes to Blacksburg, and we touched on year one not being what they wanted. They feel really good going into year two. They do. When you add some players on the outside, especially at the receiver position, they can really make plays. I mean, it's going to bring some excitement to this offense, something that the Hokies lacked last year. They didn't have many guys that you could just throw it up to and they can make a play for you. Ali Jennings is one of those players that I'm looking forward to watching. He had a big day against the Hokies last year, part of the reason that he's here. William Ross boots it away. We've got a touchback to start. And the maroon and white game is off and running from Blacksburg. Maroon won the toss. They get the ball. And so the starter last year is the starter that we see on the opening drive offensively today. That touchdown interception ratio, something that's got to be improved upon going into 2023. Yeah, and it was just the little things. I mean, four of those came in the yeah. first game. And so, of course, that's not the way that you want to start out the year with the loss and turning the ball over a lot. So that's something that Wells wants to clean up. And it's going to start with just making the right decisions. You don't have to be the hero every single play. Just make the right throw and throw the ball where the defense tells you to. Two-year starter at Marshall. He was the Conference USA Freshman of the Year back in 2020. In the first play of the game, he swings it out to Bayshaw Tootin. The transfer from North Carolina A&T makes the guy miss and gets upended at the 30 by Jaden McDonald. I mean, right there, it's an easy completion, getting it out to your new weapon, and then he's able to make some plays. I mean, Coach Pry talked about this. He said that this guy runs with great balance, and Ali Jennings said that he's an explosive player. He's shown that on the first play. Both running backs for Virginia Tech. Great catching it out of the backfield. Now it's swung out to Aiden Berkey. And he gets ripped down after a first down to move the chains. It's Jalen Jones in for the tackle after seven yards. Yeah, that's what I'm expecting from this Virginia Tech offense. A lot of easy completions. You got more threats on the outside, so just get the ball to them in space. Grant Wells did a great job with the fake. And then you get the ball to one of your playmakers in space in an easy first down. Wells with a lot of time, zips it to the sideline, and he connects over midfield. Steven Gosnell, who had just 10 catches a year ago for Virginia Tech, has one early in the spring game for 18 yards. Hey, Gosnell does a great job of running the route. I mean, they stem inside, and then the little shimmy at the top of the route gets the defender to fall. Easy completion. We need these receivers to create space and make, their job, make the job of the quarterback easy. Brent Pry is really high on Gosnell heading into 2023. This is Chance Black. His first carry goes nowhere. Got right back to the line of scrimmage. Don't just say hi. Tell him exactly what Coach <laughs> Pry said. Well, you asked him, hey, are the three transfer receivers coming in probably your top three guys? And he said, I think Steven Gosnell might be number one going into next year. And you and I both immediately were like, really? I don't think either of us were expecting that answer. I would hope Coach Pry wouldn't lie to us in that production <laughs> meeting. Swings it out. Here's Black. This time in the pass game, the running back gets involved, and he's up near the sticks, just about a yard shy to set up third and short. Yeah, I mean, that short passing game, the short, short little swing throws, or sometimes the running game, that could work as a run. You get the ball to the running back in space to where they're not running inside those tackles all the time. Chance Black is a speed player, so getting him in space is something key for this offense. Talk a lot about Malachi Thomas and Bayshaw tooting at the running back spot, but Chance Black had a handful of carries a year ago as well. Trying to become that number three back. On third and short, they go to him again, and he bounces off a couple tackles for the first down. Hey, we were talking about Gosnell and the receivers earlier. Three new transfers coming in this year as well, and three guys who had a lot of success at their previous stops. I mean, you look at that, you bring in Jalen Lane, a guy who had a ton of success. I mean, he's one of those plug and play players. And then you throw in, you throw in Ali Jennings from ODU. He's had a thousand yard receiving season before. So he's gonna be that security blanket for Grant Wells or either Kyron Jones, who's ever the starting quarterback. And that's what this offense needs. It needs some excitement. It needs some juice. And those guys bring that. Oh, there's some juice and excitement from Grant Wells early. 22 yards to one of his tight ends, Benji Gosnell. 
And a perfect five of five start for Grant Wells. Just outside the 10 for first down. Wells rolling right, faces pressure in the first incompletion of the day as Cole Nelson got the heat in on Wells. It also should have been the first flag of the day. I'm a receiver, so I'm <laughs> watching the receivers, and Gosnell had him on the corner route, just a little tug from the cornerback, and the ref didn't throw the flag, so I guess technically it was a good play by the defense. Certainly not a wide receiver asking for a pass interference, right? No way. <laughs> Tenth play of this opening drive for Wells and the Maroon offense. Kept by Wells. Everybody went to the running back, and Wells scores from 10 yards out. Come on, coach. I love that it's a touchdown. I love that you score on the first drive, but it would have been, it would have took a lot to get through those defenders. If I'm if I'm on the defense, I'd be a little ticked off right now. I don't know if that's a touchdown. <laughs> Orange jersey means nobody can hit you, and Grant Wells takes complete advantage of that. Come on, coach. There's three defenders right there. <laughs> Point after from John Love is through, and Maroon behind Grant Wells gets an early score, 7-0 after one drive. Kyle Lowe to kick it away. Prelo and Thomas back to return it. They won't get a chance as it goes soaring through the end zone. And our first look at the white offense, led by Kyron Drones, the Baylor transfer, a guy who hasn't played much, didn't get a lot of experience at Baylor, very minimal action, but is in the competition to become the starter here in Blacksburg. Yeah, I'm excited to see him. I mean, the hype is through the roof. You come in and he's thinking that, hey, I'm coming in to play. When you transfer to a school like this, you're thinking you can be the starter. So this is the first chance for the fans and all of us to really get to see him in action. Brent Pride told us yesterday, practice by practice, this guy is getting better and getting a better hang of the offense. He's out there with a very familiar face, Malachi Thomas, his running back in the backfield with him, who missed a majority of last season. Drones, this is what separates him. He can take off, but got stopped rather quickly. So Malachi Thomas, just three games a year ago, was getting a lot of carries in those first three games, but then an injury derailed his season. They're really excited to have him back at 100%. And it, and it really hurt the, the Hokies last year because he was going to be the bell cow. He was going to be the number one running back, and that's something that this offense needs. It needs a running game to get going because then that can open up the passing game. So this is what the running back room looks like. Bayshaw Tootin, the transfer in an FCS All-American from a year ago who ran for... 1,400 yards. He ran for more yards than all of Virginia Tech's team <laughs> did last year. It's amazing to see you look at his stats, and he ran for over 100 yards in every game except the first game last year. So he's a guy that can come in and make an immediate impact. He ran for 133 yards against Duke, a team in the ACC, so you know he can do it against that type of competition. Well, the guy that he's competing against for the job, Malachi Thomas, picks up 10 yards. And the great thing that Coach Price said about him is there are two different styles of running backs, you know? And Tootin's a little bit more explosive. He's that vision and balance guy. And Malachi Thomas is more the north and south running back. And he's, the, the crazy part is he's not that big. No. He's not the biggest guy in the world, but as we'll see today, he's a hard runner of the football. So a three and out to start the drive. For the white offense, they have to punt it away. And Tucker Holloway with the fair catch at the 41. Maroon up 7-0. The offense coming back on to add on to the lead. Well, the Maroon offense moved the field, ball down the field with ease on the opening drive. 10 plays, 75 yards, and a touchdown. Grant Wells looking comfortable back there under center. He did. He had a clean pocket, and he threw the ball accurately, getting Benji Gosnell in, Stephen Gosnell's brother, I might add. And then Grant Wells finishing, off, finishing it off with his legs, which I don't know if it was a touchdown, but it's a spring game, feel good. So there you go. You're putting a damper on that opening drive, Eddie, all right? Check, Let it be. Check. I mean, you could have handed it to the back, got a real touchdown, but hey, spring game, like I said. 
I'm so, you want to run it. I'm surprised you're not talking throwing, getting more wide receivers involved. I was happy with what I saw. I'm yeah. not going to be too. <laughs> <laughs> so drive starts at the 41 this time after the Maroon defense got a three and out. This is Black, the running back, and he's wrapped up at the legs immediately by Alan Tisdale, one of those linebackers who's back from a year ago. Yeah, Tisdale, they talked about these linebackers, and Coach Bry said they all can run. They're all fast. No matter who's out there, they're going to be flying around and making a ton of plays. So getting these long, these big athletic guys in that, that linebacker spot is the type of defense that Coach Pry wants to have. Tisdale missed the first six games last year, came back, and over the last five games averaged more than seven tackles per game, a guy who's always involved in getting, getting to the ball. Yeah, you look at that list of guys returning, there's so many good athletes there, so much potential there. But now you got to go out there and show it. Everybody knows that they look the part, but now it's going out and making those plays and playing consistent football. Coach Pry told us every linebacker can play more than one linebacker spot. He loves the versatility. Wells to Gosnell. Across the 40, there is a flag that came in near the end of the play. Smart play by Grant Wells. He knew that the defense jumped off sides. That's exactly what you want to do as a quarterback. You see him jump off sides. Why not take a shot down the field and see what can happen? Gosnell comes up with a big big catch. Now you decline the penalty. Now you got things rolling. First down in white territory. Over the middle, Gosnell again. Maybe Brent Pry's onto something. This might be the number one guy. That is exactly what I was just thinking. I mean, I love everything that I'm seeing. I mean, he's sure-handed. He's running great routes, getting separation. And don't forget, the secondary is the strength of this Virginia Tech team. So the fact that Gosnell is eating them alive right now, that shows for good things coming coming in the season. Three catches already in the first two drives. Hand off to Chance Black. Nice chunk on his first carry of the drive. And sometimes it's not even about the, who's the most talented receiver. It's about the rapport with the quarterback. And if Gosnell and Wells, if they have something good, then you got to send them out there so they can keep it rolling. Second straight trip in the red zone for the Maroon offense. And Bryce Duke on his second straight carry down inside the 10 to move the chains. Bryce Duke is one of those running backs that I love. I mean, he's not the biggest guy, but he's able to run in between the tackles. And sometimes you can hide behind those big offensive linemen. Bryce Duke was an all-met offensive player of the year. That, you're talking about Washington, D.C. area, Virginia, yeah. and Maryland. He was the player of the year, so that's a name to watch. I know there's other running backs, but he can really play. Wells rolling out to the right. First and goal. Air mails it to the end zone. Second and goal coming. And that's something that I love seeing from Grant Wells. It wasn't, nothing was there. Why force it? You're in the red zone. Throw it away and live to fight another day. Well, this is what the running back room looks like. A lot of guys coming back. Bayshaw Tootin, the FCS All-American in that room as well, competing for some starting snaps with Malachi Thomas. Yeah, you really look for those two to be the, the main two that are carrying the ball. And so when you can throw in a Chance Black and a, and a Bryce Duke to kind of help those guys out a little bit, this is going to be a, a team that runs the ball a lot better. What up, bro? Here's Chance Black hopping away from one and down inside the five for three yards to bring up third and goal. Yeah, we'll see. This is a key down right here. I want to see Grant Wells not try to be too aggressive. You're already up 7-0. You at least want to leave this drive with points. Scored a touchdown on a 10-yard Grant Wells run. The first drive trying to go up two possessions. Third and goal. Wells flips it out. Here's Chance Black diving for the goal line. He scores. That's complete to 28, Chance Black. Touchdown. <laughs> I love it. I mean, it was a great play call, right? Give your quarterback an a, 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 a option to run the ball or throw it. Yeah, I love the play call. And Chance Black does a great job of getting the ball in the end zone. I don't love the fact that he stretched it out because he can easily fumble. 
and that could turn into a touchback or even a turnover. But he found a way to get in. I don't know if that Ooh. knee was. Yeah. He's down. Get get replay on this. <laughs> They're just giving away touchdowns <laughs> in the spring game. You get a touchdown. You get a touchdown. 14 nothing the start for the Maroon offense. Nine plays, 59 yards, and I know I said at the start of this drive, but how comfortable does Grant Wells look running this offense right yeah, now? Yeah, I mean, it's year two in this offense, and that was just something that he talked about. He wanted to get better with the mental aspect of it, getting through his reads quicker, being cleaner with the football, and he's done a great job of that. I mean, Virginia Tech fans got to be so happy with what they're seeing from this offense in Grant Wells. You mentioned that skill set. What is the skill set for drones? What, what makes him best? I don't want to throw it out there, but people have said it. The name Cam Newton came up, and, and it's kind of similar skill set, you know, and, and when you start throwing out names like that, it's scary because it's hard to live up to that yeah. type of hype. So I don't really want to do that, but people <laughs> have said that. Didn't come out of my mouth, but we'll see. I mean, he, he looks like a big, strong, physical kid. He obviously can make all the throws. What I really want to see is him use his legs. I mean, I know you yeah. can't tackle him here, but that's an element of the game that this offense could really use. And Coach Price said he's not against using two quarterbacks. Yeah. Yeah, I caught that, too, where he said it, it may not be one starter, right? They may go to quarterback system potentially in the fall. I mean, when you got a big, strong quarterback like that, why not throw him in in the red zone? And then the quarterback becomes a threat to run the ball in. Malachi Thomas gets just a couple yards here. Yeah, he talked about that running skill set for Kyron Drones. He was by our own Craig Halbert at ESPN, the national director of recruiting, top 10 double threat quarterback in the 2022 class or 2020 class a couple of years ago. Yeah, he's a four-star player, so he's a highly recruited guy. And, and that doesn't just happen. You, you become a four-star for a reason. So I believe he won a state championship as well. So he's a winner. He just hadn't had the opportunity to go out there and play. And he's coming to Virginia Tech thinking that he can win a yeah. spot. Well, second straight drive that he starts with a third and long. He needs eight yards to keep it going. Rolling right. Zips it over the middle, and that's too tall for Ali Jennings, the transfer from Old Dominion, to bring up fourth down. And sometimes, look, it's his first time in the stadium. It's a lot of people here. Nerves are there. Yeah. You know, you got to give him a chance to settle down a little bit. A little bit of a, the, the boot action right there. Not too much separation from the receivers. Great play by the defense. And sometimes, hey, they, play, they make a better play than you. He didn't turn the ball over. Sometimes a punt is a good play. Second punt of the day for the white offense. And it tracks Tucker Holloway all the way back to the 25 for a 47-yard punt. Seven new guys coming in. We talked about it a little bit, but especially those first five, you're talking about skill positions on offense and all guys who are capable of coming in and making an impact right away. Yeah, I mean, you look, and Ali Jennings jumps off the board because he's done it before. He has the production. You know that you can count on him. A lot of the other guys, you just don't know. You hope that they come in and make an impact. Derek Canteen is a guy that the coaches rave about. He's going to be able to move around and play that nickel spot and make plays on this defense. So it's a lot of guys, a lot of new faces, but they're all going to play, and they're all going to have an impact on this season. Wells in the maroon offense up 14. Nothing already. This is Bryce Duke breaking a tackle near midfield. 23 yards on the opening play of the drive. Bryce Duke does a great job. And look, you're allowed to tackle this guy. It's a big hole. The offensive line does a great job of opening up the hole. Bryce Duke hits it. And you see some of that burst. They've got him all met player of the year. And we are joined by one of the greats at Virginia Tech. He wanted me to introduce him as the greatest defensive back to ever play at Virginia Tech. I don't know if I'm going to do that because we had a lot of great players. But he's All-American, a pro bowler in the NFL. It's hurting me to hype him up this much. <laughs> but he was that good. He was my teammate in college and in the NFL, Brandon Flowers. I think you could have easily threw in the best defensive back that ever came through. I mean, from locking you up every day in practice, I mean... <laughs> 
<laughs> you would know firsthand how great I am on the field. So. I, I was just going to ask you that. You beat me to it. I was going to say, did you lock this guy up every day in practice or what? Every day in practice. It became a habit. <laughs> when Kansas City played the Denver Broncos, I did I had 100 it yards. Just, I do it in my sleep, so it, it gets repetitive. So the fact, the fact that he's lying, I could tell you because I played the field receiver and he was a boundary corner, so we never practiced against each other. I mean, I would run away from me if I was you too, so <laughs> I get it. I get it. Here's a third and short. Goes nowhere. The white defense brings up fourth down. Hey, how fun is it being back in Blacksburg here on spring game? Beautiful day too. Beautiful day, beautiful campus. Uh, Blacksburg is just a family, you know. Virginia Tech is a family. It's great seeing guys like Cam Chancellor, my guy Eddie Roy. We go back and forth all the time, but, man, every time I see him, great memories. And just seeing Lane Stadium just in action again, man, it's a great feeling. Look, there's no surprise that last year wasn't a good year for our Hokies. What are your expectations for this year and this team? You know, it's very promising with the recruits we got in, the uh, transfer portal guys. Uh, they coming in and making a great impact is what I've been hearing. And I just can't wait to see these guys perform. I heard we got a lot of receivers that will perform this year. We got a couple quarterbacks that can throw it around. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the offense, you know, stepping up. You know, my side of the ball is the deepest side of the ball. We're just looking for somebody to be that playmaker to get, get the guys to rally around us. So, so. Mansoor Delane, he, he had freshman All-American, a lot of hype. What is it like coming in that second year after playing well? What those expectations that everybody expecting you to be the guy? How do you handle that? You know what? If you want to be that guy, this is what you want, right? You want the pressure. There's no such thing as pressure when you expect yourself to be that guy. So all the hype and everything should motivate him to want to be one of the best cornerbacks in the nation as opposed to being one of the best cornerbacks in the ACC. He has a lot of promise. He can move. He got great ball skills. So I'm looking forward to seeing him take that next big step. 12-yard touchdown run from Chance Black makes it 20 nothing for the Maroon offense. Three drives, three touchdowns. That's what I love to see. I mean, guys love playing football, making plays. They're throwing the ball accurately, getting easy completions, and then the running backs are stepping up and making big plays. That's how this offense has to look for Virginia Tech to have success this year. Brandon, what do you remember most about your playing days here at Virginia Tech? Just how electric the stadium was. Yeah. Like, when the defense got on the field, it was like we were performing in a sold-out concert, right? The stand get on their feet. They're yelling on first down, second down, <laughs> third down. You can't hear anything in the stadium. We see our cheerleaders like Eddie Royal on the sideline. They're not even getting water. They want to see us make plays because they weren't making too many plays on offense. So they wanted to see somebody make a play. So it was cool to just see all eyes on us on the field having fun. The fact that I have to deal with this all the time. <laughs> we got a group chat, and this is all it is, just him talking trash. But, I mean, it tells you how much that we love it. The fact that you came back. Why was it so important for you to come back? You're coming from Florida. It's not a quick trip like that. It took some work to get here. Why is it so important to keep coming back? I love it here. You know, uh, this is our legacy at Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. This is our alma mater. This is a school that we want to see back in the top five, top ten. So anytime I can show my face, talk to the defensive backs, even talk to this team about what it took for us to get to that level that we were at when we were playing high-quality ball, I try to do every little thing I can, you know, to just give back to this organization. It, this is my first time here, and so spring game, obviously not quite the environment that you'd have for a regular season game, but I still think it's a phenomenal, you know, spring game atmosphere. Eddie was making fun of me because I'm thinking, you know, inner Sandman, I'm loving it. I'm like, this is really cool, and he's like, man, stop it. This is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is like uh, preschool inner Sandman <laughs> compared to what we're used to, man, but I think we definitely have the best uh, out of the tunnel, you know, run out in college football. And it's, it's definitely a special thing to see, so. The first catch of the day for Nick Gallo, the leading returning receiver for Virginia Tech a year ago, and a little slow getting up for him after the catch. That is the last thing Coach Pry wants to see, somebody get hurt out here in the spring game. You just want to come out, look clean for the fans, and then get home safely. So, we'll see, hopefully it's nothing to, ah, that little shot to the back at the end, that hurts. Hopefully it's nothing too serious. End of the first quarter. Brandon, thanks so much for joining us here for a little bit. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure.
21-0, the Maroon off to a great start after one quarter. Guys, because they know players pay attention to the media, but when you hear players say it, that's when you know it's real. And this time it's swung out to Coney. He makes one miss and he's across the 45 for 31 yards. Maybe he will make an instant impact. I mean, if he's making plays <laughs> like this, why not? Got me up there. You got me up there. Hey, Coach, yeah, we, we got, got you. you. We got you, Coach. How are you? Good, man. Hey, we got Brett Pry with us right now. Coach, what are you seeing from uh, this maroon offense so far? Yeah, good stuff. Sack! Sack. Come on, Coach. That wasn't a sack. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like the old line. <laughs> I tell you, that's well, one thing I learned as a head sack. coach. You can't, you can't make yeah. everybody happy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, how about the atmosphere here today? Spring game, everyone's showing up. This is great. I'm just telling you, we got the greatest fans in America. They're supporting us like crazy. To see them out here today like this, just so encouraging, you know. Drones got sacked immediately, kept it. Coach, now, look, I, I love football. I love the game. I love the contact of it all. How close were you to making these quarterbacks live, or was that not even a thought? No, listen, hey, especially Grant and Kyron both are such great dual-threat guys. I mean, Kyron is 6'3", 235, one of the fastest and strongest guys on the team. And, uh, you know, you want to give him the ability to really use all his skill set, but we just. But, uh, you know, it's just not worth the risk right now. now some, of these some of these practices, you know, in scrimmages, the defensive guys will be like, Coach, I got him. I'm like, I don't really think you're going to make that tackle. On. <laughs> like, I'm doing you a favor by not making him live. <laughs> right. I believe that would have showed up in the missed tackle category. <laughs> Coach, you're real animated out there. Tell me, are you a guy that'll jump in and demonstrate a drill for it? Or are you still like, nah, that's not my thing? No, oh, no. Believe me, there's many mornings I wake up sore as heck. I'm like, <laughs> why did I do that? I think from a fan perspective, a lot of people are kind of wanting to hear about the quarterback storyline. What, what are you seeing from those two guys early in this one, and what have you seen all spring long? Yeah, honestly, it's been a really good spring for those guys. I think having Tyler Bowen in that room every day in those meetings has made a big difference. And then on top of that, you know, Grant Wells, is, he's, he's a three-year starter at the college level. So, you know, he was a little bit out front early, but each and every outing, uh, drones just showed a ton of improvement. I've heard you bring up Tyler Bowen a couple times in some interviews. You talked about him yesterday with us. Talk about him today. What, what's he bring to that quarterback room? Yeah, he's just such an uh, intelligent guy. His football IQ's off the charts. And, uh, you know, and have him to have him in there with, with, with the the play caller with the signal guys just it's too important i felt like we were out of sync at times last year and uh, i'm really happy with the decision to have tyler do that and i and i think he is too he feels very good about it now coach the offensive line doesn't get a lot of attention but you're shuffling around a lot this year moving caden Moore to center was that something that the team needed or you thought it was better for his future yeah, right now, you, when you're just trying to get your, your best five out there, and that's what it would be, you know. To do that, we got to move him over. And I love the way he can dent the line of scrimmage. He's strong, he's physical, he comes off the ball. I think uh, it, it's been good for him. That doesn't mean you couldn't see him back at guard if, if we need to, but I love the experience he's getting there right now. Third and long, here's Wells stepping up. Over the middle, broken up. Elijah Howard got a hand on it, brings up fourth down. Punt unit comes on. Hey, Coach, we thought you lied to us about Gosnell being the number one guy. <laughs> <laughs> but he's, he's showing that, hey, you, you might yeah. know what you're talking about now. So we I'm see a, what you say. Yeah, I'm going to tell you. He's, you know, he trimmed up. He leaned up, and it made all the difference in this game. He's one of our hardest workers. Uh, he's very consistent. He's got a lot of passion. Uh, I'm excited for him. And his brother, to be honest. Yeah. 
Uh, Coach, really appreciate you taking some time chatting with us. Uh, have a fun rest of the day, and looking forward to the 2023 season. Yes, sir. Appreciate you guys. Uh, Brent Pry, the head coach, taking some time with us, talking through his team a little bit here at the spring game. And a nice punt of 56 yards. White offense takes over here in the second quarter, down three touchdowns next. Our blood and tears through all this sadness. We are the Hokies. We will prevail. We will prevail. We will prevail. We are Virginia Tech. 16 years ago tomorrow, the tragic day here on Virginia Tech's campus. And I know something that is obviously never easy to deal with. And you were on campus during that time too, Eddie. I was, and I, I just remember that ECU game being the first game after the tragedy, and it was such an emotional game, yeah. running out of that tunnel. I mean, you really felt the Virginia Tech community come together as a family, and you felt it all there. And, and I watched some videos before I came here, and it's hard not to get emotional, you know? It, yeah. it just took me back to that moment, and uh, Nikki Giovanni did such a great job with that speech, and I'm just so proud of the Virginia Tech community and how we came together as a family. This ball flipped out to Malachi Thomas as he goes lunging down to midfield to pick up a first down after 15 yards. Maybe the jolt this wide offense needs a little bit. Yeah, and, and sometimes you just need a completion, right? Just toss it out to one of your playmakers, and he's able to get you a first down, so maybe that'll get Drones in this offense going because they have the playmakers on their side. And Drones leaves it just a little bit short as it hops in to Daquan Felton, his intended target. It's one of those throws that you kind of, you want a little bit better footwork in there. It was a clean pocket. But right here, sometimes you want to take the easy throw. You see Ali Jennings yeah. coming there on the drag route. You always want the big play, but sometimes the right throw is to get the easy completion and let your guy make a play for you. Drones quickly over the middle to Jennings. Batted away and intercepted. A late flag comes in. It's Mose Phillips, the true freshman, with the interception for the time being. Attempted, intercepted by number 18, Mose Phillips. Both of the plays and interception. Personal foul. Legal blindside block. Intercepting team, number 22. 15-yard penalty, first down. Look, you see the arm strength right there. And sometimes you throw the ball a little bit too hot for your receiver to get it. He was fitting it in in a tight window. The ball was there. That's a catch and a play that you want Ali Jennings to come up with. One that I'm sure that he's going to want back because he's a sure-handed receiver. But then on the other side, Mose Phillips, he's that guy that Coach talked about that could play as a true freshman. And we see coming up with plays like that sometimes having yourself in the right position, right? Good things happen. And so being a true freshman to come out here on the spring game, thousands of fans and to make a play like that, that's big for his confidence. Yeah, Mose Phillips, one of 11 early enrollees. He'll be a true freshman next year. Wells nearly intercepted himself. That was Cam Johnson who got a hand in there. Cam Johnson is one of those players that I was excited for last year. I knew that he came in with a ton of hype. And now he's, Cam's not the biggest guy. You see him, he could probably add some more weight, but he can really cover, and you saw right there. Like going back to Mose Phillips after that interception, coach was telling us yesterday, like, hey, he's really young, but he's got our attention through the spring right now. Yeah, I mean, and whenever you're a true freshman and the head coach is talking about just a great thing, and so that secondary is a strength. You don't think that they need any help. So that tells you how good of a player they think he is. Another completion here as that goes to Aiden Berkey. Oh, here's a look at the safeties. We're talking about some of those guys. Guys coming in, Mose Phillips, the true freshman. Just Chance Black gets a touch, maybe a yard out of it. In the secondary, I mean, Nasir Peoples is one of those, the enforcer of that defense on the back end of it. He's a guy that'll come down and 
and, and lay the wood and, and really intimidate receivers. So he's one of those players that you can really count on being back there. Stroman is a name that came up a ton in the production meeting with Coach Pry. He thinks that he's gotten bigger, stronger, and faster, and he's really going to have a big-time impact on this defense. Chance Black again makes a miss. He's got a first down, squeezing between two defenders down to the 28. And he picks up 23 yards before Mansoor Delane makes the stop. And special teams as well, as we all know, Beamer ball. Bryce Duke coming in to give Chance Black a break and picks up a couple yards. And, and that's a great point. Last year, they couldn't run the football very well. And because of that, an offense that scored just 19 points per game. Yeah, and it puts a ton of pressure on your quarterback. And we looked at Grant Wells' numbers, the nine interceptions. But when you can't run the ball, it, it allows the defense to put more people in the secondary and focus on stopping the pass. So when you can have that element of play action fake and there's a threat, you bring the safety down into the box and then that'll allow the receivers to be able to make plays for you. So getting this running game going has been very important for Virginia Tech over the spring. Yeah, an offense that ranked 113th Ooh. in FBS last year in rushing offense. Rushed for just over 1,000 yards total on the season as a team. Another run for Duke. He's right at the sticks. And part of that run game is going to have to do with the offensive line, right? You need some great blockers up front. Two guys graduated, move on. They returned three guys, including Caden Moore, who moves from right guard to center. And Coach was raving about him yesterday. He said over Christmas break, he went home and just snapped it 100-plus times a day to get ready for his new position. And that's not an easy thing. I mean, when you're used to just having your hand on the ground and, and going up and blocking somebody to be able to snap that ball, you take it for granted a good snap. You just expect it, but it doesn't always happen. So give him a lot of credit for being able to make that adjustment so quick. You look at the offensive line as well, that left tackle position, right? Who's going to play that? And, and Xavier Chaplin is the guy that coach said, there's a new offensive line. Coach Chaplin, a big guy, 6'6", 328 pounds. It's a lot of pressure on him to come in and be the guy protecting the quarterback's blind side. This run goes nowhere for the Maroon offense. Yeah, Ron Cook, one of two new head coaches or assistant coaches in on the offensive side of the ball, him and Elijah Brooks, the running back coach. But Ron Crook coming in, leading the charge of that offensive line unit, who has a little bit of change. And there's Elijah Brooks coming over from Maryland, where he spent the last four years as the running backs coach and well-known as the head coach of DeMatha Catholic High School, where he won numerous state championships at the high school level. It's not always easy to replace coaches because you got to find the right fit. And a lot of these coaching changes don't always happen with great timing. So the fact that they were able to go out and get some great guys to come in that fit Virginia Tech. And Elijah Brooks is from the area. He coached yeah. at DeMatha. So he's used to, to the Maryland area and recruiting. So that's going to be big. And if Virginia Tech wants to get back to where they were, they really have to dominate that area, the 757 area, Northern Virginia and Maryland. You got to get the best football players in Virginia, in Maryland to come to Virginia Tech. 47 yarder coming up for John Love. On its way and it hugs right inside that left upright. 47 yarder puts the Maroon offense up 24 nothing late in the second quarter. Playing for him, right? Yeah. NFL is your dream, but if it doesn't work out, then at least you have a great backup option. Uh, five guys graduated from last year's team, hoping to hear their name called on draft day or draft days. But uh, for this white offense right now, no points yet. Four drives that have resulted in three punts and an interception. How can they get things going? Yeah, just easy completions. I mean, I, hey, Drones is, I'm sure he's frustrated a little bit. You want to put on the show, but don't try to make the big play. Don't try to force anything. Just get an easy completion. Like I said, Ali Jennings wants to make that catch in it. And nine times out of ten, he will make that catch. Up. So just keep continuing to throw the ball to the right spot and don't get too aggressive. That's a great start. Great completion and a first down to move the chains right away from Daquan Felton. 
He's one of those transfers. He's coming from Norfolk State. He is, and he's a big guy, big six foot five targeting. You see, even to run after the catchability, what I noticed on tape watching him was jump balls that you could throw to him in a red zone, throw to him downfield. But I love this element of his game, being able to make some plays after the catch. Coaching staff said they really like him. He's just a little bit raw, but they think he can play a big role for them this year. And it's right back to Ooh. Felton again over the middle. And hey, and that's a tough catch right there. Great accurate throw right there. Drones throwing the ball where it should go, but then Felton reaching out and plucking the ball. This is great coverage right here by Dorian Strong. Yeah. But he reaches out and he plucks that ball away from his body and then takes the hit. Rose Phillips with the hit. I see why coach is talking about him playing as a true. And bringing it back to Drones, the quarterback too, he put that in a perfect spot. Yeah, and, and you love to see that. you have an interception so yeah. sometimes mentally that can get to you but obviously you see drones it doesn't bother him he's out here First making plays back-to-back -back -back completions to Daquan Felton of 26 and 15 yards respectively and far and away the best that the white offense has looked at any point today on its first five drives So trying to put 2022 behind them, Virginia Tech three and eight a year ago, just one win in the ACC. This is how the 2023 schedule breaks down. Right away, they get a chance at a little bit of revenge after Old Dominion knocked them off in opening week last year. That's right here in Lane Stadium. Then a couple Big Ten teams to round out non-conference play. Purdue here at home and then at Rutgers. Those are going to be some tough tests in the first three weeks. I do, and you see you got a lot of your tough opponents here at home in Lane Stadium, which is great for Virginia Tech. You look at the road games, the one that stands out to me is Florida State. Yeah. You got to go to Florida State and play a really good team with a lot of momentum. So that's going to be a big win. But they got a lot of games early in the season that they can win to get their confidence going. Started conference play last year with a win against Boston College within six straight conference losses in a row after that. Now this portion of the game is the two-minute drill. This is very important for the coaches to see how drones react in these situations because any good quarterback is good at the two-minute drive. It's either before the game or to win the game, and you want to see how he handles it. Is he calm or is he nervous? Drones is doing an excellent job right here of leading the charge. Second and four. Hands off to Coney. The freshman running back got stacked up right away. And Jeremiah Coney, a guy who ran for over 4,000 yards in his high school career nearby Richmond, Virginia. And his running back coach, Elijah Brooks, said there is something every single day that he does that's an eyebrow-raising play. Wow. And look, this right here, you're wondering why they aren't hurrying up or why they... Sometimes you don't want to score too quick in a two-minute drive. You don't want to give the Maroon team the ball back. We see how quickly they're able to score. So playing calm right now, running that clock down to make sure that that Maroon team doesn't have a lot of time when you do score a touchdown or get a field goal. Third down, the handoff again to Coney, and he moves the chains. So under a minute left, ball inside the 25 for this Virginia Tech white offense to try to get on the board. It's been all maroon. Four drives that have resulted in three touchdowns and one field goal for a 24-0 lead approaching halftime. Drones gets it out quickly. It's Reem Snyder again, his second catch of the drive before he goes tumbling down after a hit from Derek Canteen, the transfer from Georgia Southern, who you talked about him a little bit earlier. They feel good about him. Yeah, they do. And I'm hoping and praying he's something like the guy that we had up here in the booth with us and Brandon Flowers. I mean, you see that he's not scared to come up and hit, right? That's something that you want to see from a defensive back, especially somebody who may be in that slot or in the box a lot. You see he's able to come up and make a tackle on a big tight end. So I love seeing that. And the secondary is playing great. I mean, I, I love that Mose Phillips stepping up and these younger guys, Cam Johnson, making plays. So I'm intrigued, in it and I feel great about the secondary of this Virginia Tech team. Yeah, Canteen, a four-year career at Georgia Southern before transferring here to Virginia Tech. And it won't be a starter at that cornerback spot but a guy that they think is probably going to be the first guy off the bench to replace the two starters. Look, he's good enough that they're going to find a role for him. He's going to be in there somewhere 
especially on third downs or in that nickel package, he will be in there. Drones taking off, fires over the middle, batted away and intercepted again. Second straight drive with a pick for Drones, and it's Derek Canteen right on cue. I'm thinking he might have heard you about not being a starter. And, and look, he had great coverage on that play. And look, he's being physical. He's not a, the biggest guy, but he's being physical and he's getting his eyes back to the quarterback. That wasn't even his defense. That wasn't even the guy that he was covering. But is that Strowman in there making a play? And then Canteen getting a tip. You got your eyes on the ball and eyes on the quarterback. Good things happen. And it, that's what this secondary needs, man. They needed more turnovers last year. They needed more sacks. So that's encouraging to see. I know Jones is a little bit upset right there, but somebody's got to make a big play, and this time it was the defense. Stroman, the deflection. Canteen, the interception. Back-to-back -back picks for Jones. Look, and Jones is, is playing just fine. I, don't, I know the two interceptions don't look great, but you also got to understand that him being able to use his legs is a big part of his game also, and you can't do that. So sometimes you want to make the perfect throw, and a lot of times the receivers have to make a play as well. Yeah. The ball has hit both the receivers' hands, and they didn't bring it in, so the stat line isn't going to look great for Jones, but that's not, not the entire story. Yeah, both times he was looking for Ali Jennings, the old Dominion transfer. Final 15 seconds before halftime. Wells quickly on the screen, connects with his wide receiver. It was Latrell Sutton, redshirt freshman, his first catch. And the final play of a first half for the Maroon offense that looked great. Four drives with three touchdowns and a field goal, and the Maroon team up 24-0 in the Virginia Tech spring game. There's a quarterback battle in Blacksburg, and this is how these two guys fared over the course of the first half. Grant Wells with a touchdown both through the air and on the ground, completed 12 of his 18 passes and looked really, really good in that first two quarters. Yeah, I loved everything I saw from Grant Wells. He got the ball to the right spot. He looked very comfortable in the offense year two for him. And then Kyron Drones, I mean, those two interceptions, don't pay attention to him. There are two passes that the receiver should have brought the ball in. He looks great. So the Hokies have two really good options at quarterback. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because I was going to say the same thing about drones is those two interceptions are probably going to inflate his numbers in the opposite direction. But as the half went on, he got a lot more comfortable. Yeah, that's exactly what you want to see in that two-minute drive right there. He was efficient, and he did everything that he needed to do to come down there and get some points. Just unfortunate turnover at the end. Well, the day for those two more than likely done. This is Taj Bullock, the redshirt sophomore from New Jersey, who's taken over to run the offense for the white team. Throws over the middle on the slant. It's caught by Jennings. 15 yards and a first down. This is great because Jennings, we talk about that receiver that should have hauled in the two passes from Drones. That, that was Jennings in there right there, showing the ability to adjust to the ball. A little bit behind him, but Jennings made the play, a sure-handed receiver. That's what we want to see from him. Maybe a little nerves there as well, but he comes up with a big play. One of those three transfer receivers, Ali Jennings, first team all-conference in the Sun Belt at Old Dominion last year. Da Daquan Felton as well, coming in from Norfolk State. And Jalen Lane from Middle Tennessee. And that's thrown over the top of Felton. The intended target, Jalen Hoyle, got the hit. Well, here's the three transfer wide receivers, and all three of these guys probably going to get significant snaps right away in 2023. Yeah, we saw Felton, what he could do with the ball in his hands, yards after the catch. We just saw Jennings make a play, and the reason we haven't seen Jalen Lane making plays out there is because he is not playing today, so he's out. That's the only reason you're not hearing his name a ton today. 
Yeah, a guy who can impact the game all over the place. All-conference wide receiver, kick returner, and punt returner is Jalen Lane, the transfer from Middle Tennessee. Is Bullock. Fires incomplete. Bring up third and long. Fourth down. Oh, they're going to change it to a sack. Said the defense got there before he got rid of it. That must have been Coach Pride giving some input. You see him talking to the ref. <laughs> Let's see. I don't know about that, Coach. Yeah. I don't, I don't know about that one either. We're, we're going to have some beef for Coach Pry after this. but. So not doing special teams in the second half. So you won't see punts like you saw in the first half. They're just going to have the maroon offense take over. We'll see that on the other side. Maroon up 24-0 with the ball. All maroon team in the spring game right now for Virginia Tech. Grant Wells, the starting quarterback, threw and ran for a touchdown in the first half. He's got his team up 24-0 and got a little bit of help from the defense as well, too, with a couple interceptions. Yeah, he did. He, he was clean, and don't forget that Grant Wells can run the ball. He had six touchdowns last year's rushing. And Kyron Jones right there, those are the two interceptions. As you see the receiver gets his hands on the ball, he's not able to bring it in. And Ollie Jennings, I've been there before. Sometimes it's just not your day, right? And you just want to get a couple catches to make you feel a little bit better. But Jones, don't feel bad. You had a good day. Grant Wells' day is done. As William Pop Watson, the true freshman from Springfield, Massachusetts, taking over the offense now. And he's garnered a lot of interest right now out, out of spring one for him. I'm excited to see him, the hype around him. There's a ton of it. I, and I believe he was originally scheduled to go to Nebraska, but that changed. He stayed in contact with Coach Bowen. And now we see right here, he's a playmaker, right? He can get out there and make plays. Don't get hurt. <laughs> a little over eager. <laughs> yeah, but you want to see that from your quarterback. And yeah. they, they always say make him guard all 11, and that's something that he's going to make you do. I mean, he's going to bring a lot of excitement to this offense whenever he does get a chance to play. But I knew he could run the ball. What I really want to see is him throwing the ball and seeing if he could be accurate and how, how much of an understanding of this offense he actually has. He threw for almost 8,000 yards in his high school career, ran for more than 2,000. A dual threat guy who can do a bit of everything. I saw some people walk as I was walking in with, with Watson jerseys already, so I'm sure those are family members. But look, he's going to bring a lot of excitement to, to Virginia Tech, and I'm just anxious to see him, right? I mean, he looks like a playmaker. He looks the part, so we'll see what else he does today. As coaching staff said through the first few practices of spring, they've been really impressed with him and think he has a ton of room to grow. Deep ball down the sideline, and it's caught for a touchdown by Tucker Holloway. Look, hey, we talk about a quarterback controversy. He might have he just entered the chat right there. I mean, you saw him make plays with his legs, and then he could throw an accurate deep ball. So I love it. I mean, I'm excited already. And that's what we haven't been able to see over the past couple of years. What do you think that identity is, what you're seeing today here in the spring game? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, right now I'm not trying to be too high or too low with the right. spring game. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one thing I've learned is that I've gotten really hype on a couple of spring games and it doesn't end up being the same thing. But there's a lot of time that, you know, that it's just going to continue to get better. Hopefully we get better. Well, stay with us, Andre. We'll be right back after the commercial and we'll continue from there. Virginia Tech Hall of Fame wide receiver Andre Davis. Back from 98 to 01, more than 2,000 receiving yards in his career and a second round draft pick by the Cleveland Browns back in 2002 after his four year career as a Hokie here in Blacksburg. Hey Andre, great to have you with us here in the booth back here for the spring game in Blacksburg. Uh, Tell us about the glory days of Virginia Tech football a little bit. Man, that was some great times that we had. Just really, even before we had both sides of the stadium, the, em uh, the end zones were actually empty at that time. And so just to see how loud it was, to really be able to feel the ground shake um, was really amazing. So I'm hoping we can get back to that with the same sort of uh, excitement. So we saw those highlights, but my research shows it. It almost didn't happen, right? You got into an argument with your soccer coach. Is that what led to your football career? 
Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> uh, if I was still, if I was going to be allowed to play the forward position, because I thought that was the position that your fastest guy should be, <laughs> I would have been playing <laughs> soccer. And so instead, I said, I have to find something to keep me in shape for indoor and outdoor track. And I said, let me try this football thing out and see what happens. I'll pick the two positions on the field that I feel get hit the least. Wide receiver <laughs> and punt return, or and, and free safety. Yeah. And next thing you know, I played nine years in the NFL. So uh, I think it was a good choice. It, you run yeah. You run fast like you said. They don't hit you as a wide receiver, right? You run uh, fast enough to get to the end zone. Absolutely. <laughs> That's been my calling card is uh, being the guy that just runs deep and then able to go get, you know, whatever the quarterback throws. How much fun was it catching passes from Michael Vick? I mean, it was amazing. Uh, I think not just from Mike, but just the whole team that we had at that time, the way we competed with each other day in and day out, that was what made the game fun. That's what uh, challenged, seeing how great our defense was, uh, just challenged us that much more as an offense to be able to go out there and try and go against the best ranked defense in the country. And if we could beat them, we know we would have fun going in there on game day. That's what I wanted to know about that 99 team. Were y'all just better than everybody? Was it the leadership? What made you guys special? Yeah, I think it was the culture. You had a whole lot of guys that weren't highly recruited guys. I mean, once again, you're having a guy on scholarship who liked playing soccer and was only <laughs> playing football, you know, to, to stay in shape for something else. So there was a bunch of guys on the team who we had who were walk-ons, who earned scholarships. And when you see those kind of guys go out there day in and day out and put in the work, that was the kind of culture that we had, was just hard-nosed, being able to go out there and then prove what you had each and every day. Um, it always showed up well on, on Saturdays. What are you seeing from the two quarterbacks? Uh, we were talking about Michael Vick, who you were catching passes from, but the two quarterbacks, Drones and Wells, competing for the starting job. What do you like about those two? I mean, once again, I think we have two mobile quarterbacks. I think in this day and age, if you don't have a mobile quarterback, it's going to hurt. Um, and, and so to be able to see guys uh, get out there and be able to make plays when something's not there, that's always something you want to have. And it seems like they have strong enough arms to be able to get the ball out downfield when they need to be. So I think the biggest thing I'm really going to look for is to see their decision making um, as we get into games, as we get into more pressure situations, see what kind of decisions they're making. And hopefully uh, it'll be all good things that will work out for us. Dre, are you wearing two watches? I am. <laughs> I'm like, are my eyes playing tricks on me or is I this am. real? There's the, the difference between a timepiece okay. and just a digital watch for information. So I got to get my steps in. <laughs> okay. I got to make sure I get all of my, my exercise minutes and stuff in. But then you also got the nice timepiece <laughs> to show that. So it's uh, a fashion thing. So in a way. In, in a way. Okay. In, in a way. It's not for everybody. <laughs> right, it's not right. for everybody. Okay. <laughs> One for looks and the other to keep track of your steps. I like it. Uh, yes, See, yes. And, and calendar as well. That's it, that's the really important thing is that I can take a peek down and know what my next events are. <laughs> so that, that helps a lot. <laughs> hey, so tell me, you just you got an award, the ACC Unite Award. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I'm doing research, and I'm like, why don't I just ask? <laughs> yeah, it's definitely it's for people who are making an impact in their communities for social justice or racial justice. And it, it's something that was always, it's always been important to me, um, being able to be uh, a part of a uh, community that is underserved in many ways and to be able to f get to the point that you have success and can actually give back is something that's always been important to me and my family. And something that we did is that we gave a scholarship back uh, to the VT uh, Inclusive Fund, and it was to help for recruitment and retainment of uh, underserved black uh, and underserved communities, um, as well as also working with an organization called Africa New Life Ministries that's based in Rwanda. And we feed, clothe, and educate over 11,000 kids there throughout 12 communities. And so to be able to give back from the platform that I have is something that's always been important to say, hey, once you get to a certain point, no matter how big or small, you take your gifts, talents, and treasures and find a way to give back to your community. That's awesome. Wow. That's really wow. cool. Yeah. This Maroon offense moving the ball well, up 31-0. Dylan Whitkey, the new quarterback that's in there. Got him. Oh, oh nearly connected, but... On the field. Yes, there was a whistle before. Oh, they rule a sack. Coach Pry at it again. <laughs> Ended the play early, right? Yeah. Oh, that's not a. Sack. Where's the sack, Coach? Defensive coach, I'm telling you. 
But Dre, I want to tell you, man, you're the perfect example of what you want a, a Hokie to be, yeah. you know? On the field, off the field. Like, you're a great example for everybody. So I'm so glad you come back because you inspired me to come here. You're out there making those big plays, but also getting to see the things that you're doing off the field. Man, it just makes me want to be a better person. So shout out to you. Everything that you're doing, man, keep doing it. Thank you, Eddie. Uh, it's really important that I get a chance to come back and share my experiences with the student athletes that we have here. And that's the reason why uh, in talking with our athletic director, Whit Babcock, he's given me the opportunity to be the director of student athlete support and community engagement. So although I live up in Delaware, I get an opportunity to come back here for a lot of events during the football year and during the spring to give back not only to our student athletes, but also to our students uh, across the university. So it's a blessing with the experience I had here Virginia Tech is a great school, and I want to talk about it as often as I can. What all does that role include? It includes being able to talk to recruits. It talks to their families. It talks to our current student athletes that we have now. It thanks our donors who are who have been given, uh, who are very important to just the success that we have as a uh, as a football team, as a community, as an athletic community, um, and also across the uh, entire university, making sure that we can continue to provide the resources that are going to be necessary for our student athletes and our coaches to be able to perform at their best. Wow. Well, Andre, really appreciate you joining us, taking some time with us, and uh, great to have you back here on campus. Absolutely. Thank you guys for having me. That is Andre Davis, Hall of Fame wide receiver for Virginia Tech from, from 1998 to 2001. So white offense gets the ball back after they force a turnover on downs. Pass over the middle, that's intercepted. Off the deflection. Miles Ellis with the pick, and the third time the Maroon defense has come away with an interception today. Number 33, Miles Ellis. It's a great job by the defensive lineman getting his hand up and tipping that ball. But look, we thought the teams were lopsided at first. We thought that the white team had the advantage. Yeah. When we were looking at the roster, we were like, Coach, are, are you sure this is fair? So <laughs> Coach knows better than us, and this is not what I expected. I expected it to be a lot closer. But Maroon is stepping up. That defense is playing great. Grant Wells looked awesome. He played a clean game. So, And then Pop Watson went out there and made some plays as well. So, hey, this has been a great showing for the Maroon. Hey, Pop Watson's right back out there. Threw a touchdown pass on his only drive so far, and he takes over with this Maroon offense at midfield. He can take off and run, but when no quarterbacks go into the ground, they'll rule, rule that down after a one-yard loss. So if that last play <laughs> was a sack, that was not a tackle. Like, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm now Coach Pry is confusing me on what's a tackle, what's a sack, because I know how explosive Pop Watson is, and that little arm tackle is not going to make that play on him. <laughs> it's the second time Elijah Clock has gotten to a quarterback in the backfield today. Watson rolling left, throws, completes it to Benji Gosnell the brother of Steven Gosnell, who's had a really good spring game. Redshirt freshman Benji Gosnell. Brent Pry told us yesterday he's got great hands, thinks that he can come in and have an impact for the Hokies this year. That tight end position is very important for this Virginia Tech team catching the ball but most importantly blocking you got to be a good blocker to play in this offense something that coach Price spoke that they need to be better at and that'll also help out with this running game but look at pop watson again <laughs> i mean we keep talking about him i'm not too sure you don't add him into this quarterback competition even this year 12 yards for the dual threat quarterback to pick up the first down him and the maroon team up big after three quarters not just football players on the field, but also great members of the community here in Blacksburg. A lot of community service, and that was something when we met with Brent Fry yesterday, Eddie, we spent the first, what, five, six, eight minutes not even talking anything about football, just about the community service and everything that this team has been doing off the field this offseason. Yeah, and he said the big event was so special. It was over 7,000 students out there on a Saturday giving up their Saturday to give back to the community. He said we just need to be a part of this. So he 
didn't cancel practice. He moved it. He rescheduled it so that the team could participate in that. Coach Pry is doing an excellent job of getting these guys acclimated in things outside of football. It's yeah. not all about football to him, whether it's learning how to dress, how to treat women. He's teaching these guys a lot of life lessons that's necessary for success in the future. Bryce Duke with the catch out of the backfield from Pop Watson. Yeah, he said that they weren't a part of the big event last year. The football team wasn't. That was his first year on campus. And he said he went to it. The football team wasn't there. And he said, what are we doing not here? And he said, I made it an important emphasis to make sure that we were a part of it next year, which is now this year. Handoff again. This is Chance Black. He's had a good day, a receiving and a rushing touchdown. Also had networking night just a couple nights ago on Thursday night where they got dressed up, went through some mock interviews, had some professionals in the Blacksburg community come and interview them, put them through mock interviews, and kind of just show them what a job interview was like. He showed them how to dress and also how not to dress, <laughs> yeah. right? And sometimes those are things that you just don't know yeah. as a young man. And so it's even learning, shaking hands and making eye contact. It's a lot of these things that guys need to know. Everybody's not going to make it to the NFL. Everybody's not going to have that story career. So you have to go get a normal job at some point, and you need to know how to carry yourself. And Coach Pry is doing a great job at teaching these young men that. He said it was cool because it was a not, no pressure of any, he said, but with the practice and the experience doing that, when you do get in a real job interview scenario, you know how to handle it. Chance Black again gets another yard to bring up third down. I don't know what, what you're seeing from him, Eddie, but he kind of seems to me like he might be that number three guy behind those top two running backs and Malachi Thomas and Bayshaw Tootin this year. Yeah, he was, and Chance Black showed me some things last year. It was a couple spurts in there to where you watch him, and you're like, this guy is a really good running back. So between him and Bryce Duke, I also like Bryce Duke a lot. So that it's going to be a mix of between those two guys, but you need running backs, right, because yeah. injuries happen. So having depth is very important. Jeremiah Coney as well, true freshman. We've seen him at times running the ball today. And Watson sails it over the head of Black. So field goal unit comes on on fourth down. It's John Love, who's already hit a 47-yarder today. He's attempting this one from 35. He was one for two last year. His one make was from 23 yards. Today, he's got a couple makes from 35 and 47. And a 34-nothing lead for Maroon. The white offense coming back on the field next, trying to get on the board. News out of South Bend this afternoon, which is also important here in Blacksburg. Former Virginia Tech wide receiver transferred to Notre Dame this offseason, but he has decided to step away from football. About halfway through this, you see, focus on my mental and physical health. He has decided to medically retire from football and start the next chapter of his life. That was a big name in the transfer portal that Notre Dame got from here in Virginia Tech, and Eddie deciding to step away and focus on stuff that's more important than football with his mental and physical health. Yeah, and, and it's always a tough thing because he, you grow up and that's all you do your entire life. Your dream is to play in the NFL, as I'm sure was his dream as well. And mental health is, is a very important thing. And even Grant Wells spoke on it. Yeah. Just the challenges of, of not reading everything in the media because sometimes it's not all positive. And so that affects guys. And Grant even spoke about coaches may not even understand the pressure that players are under. So mental health is very important. And working and helping each other through tough times is very important with that. So, I mean, I, I, Caleb was a great player here, and I wish him the best. But it's something that guys need to pay attention to, right? And so Caleb was a great player here, and, and I wish him nothing but the best. I tried to reach out to him and, and send my well wishes, but uh, you just never know what's going on with somebody else. So. 
it, that was a subject that even as recently as a few years ago wasn't really talked about in sports, but mental health and, and making sure your mental health is where you need to be. That's been something that's been talked about a lot more year after year after year. I agree, and it should be because, yeah. I mean, it's tough. Sometimes you deal with injuries, and that puts you in a, in a spot where you don't want to be. I mean, it, it, sometimes it's hard. You can't do the one thing that you've been doing your entire life. It's taken away from you sometimes, and, and handling that, these are young men, right? right? I mean, they, and they still got a lot of emotions and a lot of things that they don't know how to handle. So I'm sure for Caleb, this is a tough situation, and I pray that he has family and friends around him to help him through this. It's our first look at Devin Farrell, redshirt freshman quarterback from Georgia. He hands it off. P.J. Prelo takes a hit across the 45 as he goes stumbling down. 14 yards for Prelo, a first down for the white offense. The final seven minutes of this spring game trying to get on the board. Farrell didn't play at all last year as a true freshman. Threw for about 2,000 yards his senior year of high school at Milton High School. He goes deep to Jennings, oh. who can't quite pull it in, just out of the stretch of his fingertips. It was actually a really good throw. I like his footwork in the pocket, just sliding to the left a little bit. Threw an accurate mm. football, just to, that. See, that's timing. That That's not being around a receiver a ton. But when you get into the season or if you get more reps together, that's a touchdown. So it's something that you're going to see in spring ball. I know we all want to see the big play, and the white team really could have used that, but that's nothing but timing. Prelo escapes one tackle before he goes down at the 37. That was a good-looking ball, too, wasn't it, from Farrell? Hey, I love what I'm seeing from these younger quarterbacks. I mean, Farrell coming in there, not scared at all, taking that deep shot. A lot of times you come in, you just want to get something going, but he's like, I'm down 34 <laughs> points. We need a big play. <laughs> Seen a lot from Pop Watson, the true freshman. Dylan Whitkey, another true freshman, was in there for a drive earlier today. Six different quarterbacks have been used between the two teams. Here's a third and four. Farrell wants to go deep again, has a target. It's Turner Bradshaw. Incomplete. Uh, it's not It's not necessarily two throws you want back, but he, he kind of does. I mean, sometimes, sometimes you want to put a little bit more air under there, allowing the receiver to run under it. But, man, two big plays, two missed opportunities right there. Keeping the offense on the field here on fourth and four. We, we look at the score, and you know the, the players on the white are ticked off, <laughs> losing by 34. Yeah, I think about the coaches as well. The coaches, they're competitive as well, and they're losing 34 to nothing as well. So <laughs> it's not only the players that are mad right now. Delay a game before the snap. Delay a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. I say keep the offense on the field. Fourth and nine, go for it anyway, right? Yeah, nothing to lose. Now, now you know you have to throw the ball, yeah. so, so it'll be a pass. But this is what the spring game is for, right? You want it to be clean. You want everything to be perfect. But this is a great learning opportunity for a young quarterback. You might be onto something. Maybe the play that Farrell got was a run, so he decided not snap it, knowing he goes back five yards and he gets another chance to throw it, right? There you go. <laughs> he, mi he missed on two deep shots. He's like, I want another chance. So we'll see. The fourth and nine, Farrell to the near sideline. He connects. It's Aiden Green to move the sticks on fourth and nine. It, it's a great throw, right? Nice little comeback route at the bottom of the screen, an accurate ball. Aiden Green's a name that came up as well, a freshman receiver who people have been impressed with. So, look, the skill position is definitely upgraded from last year. Even the quarterbacks are playing better. The receivers, everybody, we see the nice move by the running back right there. They have the playmakers on the outside now that Virginia Tech is used to having. Yeah, very limited weapons to go to last year, and especially after Caleb Smith left to go to the transfer portal and ended up at Notre Dame. 
became even less, but they bring in three transfers. They've got guys, a couple freshmen that they bring in as well, and guys that they've developed in the offseason. Brent Pry feels really good about his wide receiver room going into 2023. And that's something we talked to Coach Pry about is the transfer portal. Who do you go get? And he said, you got to identify the needs. What do we need? And they saw that they needed receivers. They went out and got that. They got some help in the secondary. And so he did a great job of that. And a lot of that is research, right? Because it's not like you're recruiting a high school kid and you yeah. get years to recruit them. He said you only get a couple weeks to find out who these guys are so you can't miss. And they did a great job of finding impact players. And he said you might be recruiting a high school kid for three, four years. He said in the transfer portal, you have two weeks max usually to get a guy. And he said they typically won't go after somebody unless they have a connection. A coach knows somebody or they know a high school coach or somebody that they already have prior experience and relationships with already. Yeah, and he said you want it to be a, the right fit, not a guy that's coming in just trying to get stats and then leave. He said it, culture is everything. So you don't want to bring in the wrong guy because he's going to affect the younger players in that locker room. So you got to be picky about the guys that you pick in the portal. Back-to-back -back incompletions from Devin Farrell bring up fourth and four. I think we got the field goal unit coming on. I hate to bring up another school when I'm on campus. But look, Florida State, look at the model that they have. I yeah. mean, they brought in guys that make an immediate impact. They were struggling, but then they kept bringing in transfer guys who could play right away. And then you can develop the younger guys that you're recruiting. And then they can grow in. Hey, Florida State won 10 games. William Ross misses the field goal. 34-0 late in the fourth for the Maroon team. Finally, this is what we've been waiting all day to see. This is what everybody wants to see. Eddie Royal. Save back, the best for last, right? <laughs> back, back in his day here in Blacksburg, this guy could do everything. And the video's not too grainy yet, so I'm not that old. But, hey, I take a lot of pride in the fact that these highlights are all big games, right? So, so there's my guy, ACC championship there. Oh, man, the good old days, right? <laughs> 04 to 07, wide receiver that went on to get drafted by the Broncos. Man. How, eight years? How long were you? Nine there? years. Nine, Don't nine cut years? me I, short, I, man. Nine. Man, I won't live that one down. <laughs> <laughs> Final minute of the spring game here for Virginia Tech. This ball swung out. caught by Cole Pickett, his second of the day. Here's a look at the ACC. Quarterbacks are kind of all over the place. A lot of new names coming in, a lot of names going out as well. Yeah, seeing Sam Hartman go to Notre Dame, that was a big move, but the two that I was looking at was Brendan Armstrong and Phil Dracovic yeah. staying in conference, right? Yeah. And the main thing, the main reason they did is because they got with their offensive coordinator. He had success with a guy before. Why not go try it again in a different spot? So we'll see how that all plays out. Yeah, those two guys staying in the ACC, just new schools. DJ Uwe Ungalale. He just had Clemson. to say it. <laughs> he was I, up here I, working I, on it. <laughs> he just had to get it in. <laughs> I practiced saying it so much this morning that I thought I can't just not say it. <laughs> Thirty-four, nothing. The win for the maroon team over the white team here in Virginia Tech spring game. Your final thoughts on uh, the direction that Virginia Tech football is headed? I thought it was great. The playmakers on the outside made plays. Grant Wells was clean and efficient. Exactly what you wanted to see. The running game got going. But I'm leaving thinking, man, we got something special in Pop Watson. Yeah. True freshman quarterback showed flashes today. Grant Wells was 12 of 18 for 148 yards, a rushing touchdown, and a passing touchdown. 34-0 the win for the Maroon team over the white team here at Virginia Tech Spring Game in Blacksburg. A big thank you to Daniel Gibbons, our producer, and our director, Eric Fry, as well as the rest of our great ACC Network crew. For Eddie Royal, I'm Noah Reed, saying so long from Blacksburg after the Virginia Tech Spring Game Maroon gets it done in convincing fashion, 34-0 over the white team. Season is here soon enough.